Bereft is a poignant and contemplative poem by Robert Frost. Frost is known for using nature and rural settings to explore deeper philosophical and emotional themes. This poem is no exception. Where had I heard this wind before change like this to a deeper roar? What would it take my standing there for holding open a rest of door, looking downhill to a frothy shore? Summer was past and day was past, somber clouds in the west were massed, out on the porch's sagging floor, leaves got up in a coil and hissed, blindly struck at my knee and missed. Something sinister in the tone told me my secret must be known. Word I was in the house alone somehow must have gotten abroad. Word I was in my life alone. Word I had no one left but God. So what did you notice? Read it a few times and pay attention to what you notice each time through. This poem, like many of Frost's works, delves into the complexities of human emotions and experiences. Let's start with the title. It immediately sets a melancholic tone for the poem. The word bereft is about loss, and the connotation emphasizes deprivation, or being stripped of something. The title sets us up for a poem that explores themes of absence or alienation or loneliness. In the first lines we have a question. Questions can signal a few things, like curiosity. But I think in this poem it is signaling the speaker's uncertainty. Watch what happens to his uncertainty as this poem progresses. The speaker is wondering about the roar of the wind. That's a metaphor. The wind roars. So what else roars that might complete this comparison? A large dangerous animal? Something sinister? The effect is that the speaker is uneasy or feeling vulnerable or even threatened. The wind, or that sinister thing, is observing him standing at the door of his house. The door he holds is restive. That's personification. The door is not able to keep still and is becoming increasingly difficult to control probably because it's being pushed and pulled by the wind. But it seems to suggest a lack of control on the speaker's part. The frothy shore is probably showing turmoil. Is that the description of his emotional state reflected in the water? The sea is often symbolic of the struggles that we encounter in life. Summer was past and day was past. The seasons and the hours of the day are often used in literature to symbolize human life. The spring being birth and the winter death. The morning is birth and nighttime is death. Summer and autumn, afternoon and evening, these represent our lives between life and death. This poem is set in autumn. When is the autumn of life? Old age? So the speaker might be an older fellow, at the stage where life's activity and energy is wound down a little bit. Somber clouds, more personification. And these kinds of clouds usually accompany stormy weather. So there's a sense of dark foreboding here, out on the porch's sagging floor. The sagging floor of the porch could be a symbol of decay or instability or weariness. Look at all the metaphors and images so far. Roaring wind, restive door, frothy shore, somber clouds, sagging floor. Are you picking up on the tone here? And the emotions of the speaker? It seems like he's not really liking this phase of life. The things that usually give one joy in old age, like friends and family, are absent. He is in his house, and no one is there. Then we have this line. It continues in the same vein, but I think it adds something new to the mix. Leaves got up in a coil and hissed, blindly struck at my knee and missed. This is interesting as a metaphor. What the leaves are compared to is implied rather than named. A snake. So snakes have often been considered sinister, so that fits the poem. Another thing to consider is the symbolic meaning of snakes. Whenever you come across a snake in literature, you need to consider that it might be a symbol of temptation, because of the serpent in the Garden of Eden. But I don't think this snake represents temptation. Snakes are also associated with death. That seems to work a little bit better with the old age thing. But I don't think this line is just about death. This is the first time death makes an appearance, and the last, so without this repetition to say it symbolizes death is overstating it. There's something else I'd like to consider. These lines contain an illusion. In the famous to be or not to be soliloquy, Hamlet talks about shuffling off this mortal coil. And he's talking about death. People usually think about this line in terms of leaving our dead body and going to heaven. Perhaps like a snake sheds its skin and becomes something new. And that certainly is what Shakespeare is saying in that line. But he might be up to something more. Wouldn't surprise me. You see the word coil, spelled this way? Used to mean turmoil. Noisy confusion that creates uncertainty. Shakespeare's audience would have known about that definition. Hamlet just finished talking about life in terms of a sea of troubles and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. So to me that sounds a lot like turmoil and confusion. So the allusion to Hamlet's coil totally fits with what's happening to the speaker in Bereft. Then these lines. Something sinister in the tone told me my secret must be known. 
The seriousness, the sinisterness, and the turmoil all seem to arise from a secret. One that the speaker wants to keep hidden. And he seems to dread it being found out. You have secrets, right? We usually don't worry too much about them until it looks like it's gotten out. And then you have all these feelings. And those are the feelings that are created in the poem. So what's his secret? I have found that a lot of readers of this poem are tempted to think that the speaker has a secret that's particular to him. And so it goes unnamed, perhaps so that we can insert our own secret into the reading of this poem. But I wonder if the speaker does name the secret. I wonder if it's in the next line. Word, I was in the house alone. The secret is that he's in the house alone. Is this an appalling secret? Word is? That's repeated in this poem. It's a phrase that suggests that people are talking about it. It's spreading. And all of nature is conspiring to remind the speaker of his loneliness. The last lines repeat that the secret is being spread. Word, I was in my life alone. Word, I had no one left but God. The repetition strengthens the sense of loneliness, but it might do something else too. If you have no one left but God, you might have nothing, but it also might mean that you have everything. But if you actually have God, you lack nothing. It seems to me that if you consider that the poem began with uncertainty and that the speaker gains clarity as the poem progresses, the final line may need to be read as if it were a sincere thought. And that's not unusual for Robert Frost. His poems often end with a bit of a lift at the end. Anyway, that's what I've got. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.